So as for an agenda today, I just want to really quick tell you a bit about myself so you can use me as a reference for your volunteer efforts or your personal efforts on social. Um, and then I want to talk about you all. I want to go over two main social channels, um, Facebook and Instagram, and then talk about several tactics and strategies that you can use on those platforms um, to get you comfortable with it. And then wrap things up with two quick examples that you can use as a reference to build off with your own um, post on and then a fun little challenge as well. And then of course some Q&A. So quick about me, um, these are two of my Instagram handles. So if you are on Instagram, I'd love to connect with you um, and keep in touch and kind of see your progress following your social media journey following this presentation. Um, but I am what I like to call a serial entrepreneur, so I'm always hopping from one thing to the next, whether it be something on a really small scale or selling thousands of products across the country. All of my marketing efforts in the past have been through social media, just because that's kind of the time that I've grown up in, and it seemed to be really effective for me. Um, so ultimately, that led me to my job at a corporate technology company where I'm in marketing, but I get to run a lot of the corporate accounts. So writing um, posts for executives, interacting with partners, brands, highlighting customer success stories and things of that nature. This is what I love to do and it's kind of my bread and butter. So any questions you all have around social media, I am so more than help, like happy to help you. So how many of you guys have a Facebook? Okay, a lot more than I was expecting. So my parents aren't on Facebook, um, but almost all of you raised your hand, so that's good. But even though you are on Facebook, it's hard or it's easy to forget some of like the original purposes of these social accounts. We're always fed a wealth of knowledge and so much information coming in and out that sometimes we don't take a step back to look at the original purpose of these social channels and say, okay, why are we really using them? So this is just a brief um, reminder. And I just want to put this out there. You might leave this presentation and be like, homegirl, we knew all this years ago, or this might be brand new information. So don't compare yourself to your neighbor, help your neighbor out. And then um, as a, a band of volunteers, you guys are a team and you need to be all on the same wavelength and really caught up to speed. Um, so it might be new to someone and it might not be to the other, but you guys are all gonna hopefully by the end of this have all the tools in your toolkit to be on the same page on social media. So with Facebook, it is really easy to forget your audience. And this is strictly your friends and your family and no one else. So I don't wanna be scrolling on my Facebook and feel like my privacy is being evaded or someone has this company and they're just pushing it on me and marketing to me. That's not why I go on Facebook. I just want to interact with my friends and my family. So if you're going to connect and think about posting about an event or something with Carolina Donor Services, be mindful of that audience. It's your friends, it's your family, and it's nobody else, unless you are a large organization. Um, and kind of post your message and tailor your message to that audience. <laughs> Another thing to consider is that um, Facebook is widely used on both web and mobile devices, so your phone and your laptop, and there's a lot of different things you can do on both of those. So you can go on Facebook to make a post, to watch videos for hours, to play a game, to chat someone, video chat. So when you're creating some content um, to post out there, what is going to break the noise and be a distractor in all those different um, activities that we can do. And then lastly, um, in comparison to Instagram, your content on Facebook can be a little bit more detail-oriented and get into the nitty-gritty details about the work that you're doing or um, throw in some facts and figures in there, whereas on Instagram you kind of want to stray away from that a little bit, but feel free. I mean. Don't write an entire novel, but feel free to get a little more detail-oriented on Facebook, so. 
In comparison, Instagram is solely a visual experience. So how many of you are on Instagram? Okay, great. So you know you're just scrolling through and it's video after video, picture after picture. And once again, what is gonna break the noise in that feed when you're just scrolling, scrolling through? A huge thing on Facebook is you can repost new stories and, um, oh sorry, should I just talk on here? <laughs> Yeah, I'll stand back here. Um, so there's, you know, constantly reposting other people's photos, funny memes, news stories. But on Instagram, that kind of content is degraded a little bit, and you want to post original pieces of content, posting your own photos, your own videos. Um, I don't know if you caught this earlier, but one of my Instagram handles was Kale Me Kate because I um, have like a health and fitness account. Even though this whole account is focused on food and working out, the things that perform the most is when I post with me and my friends. People want to see you, and they want to see what you're doing. And then um, the last point on this slide is visibility and engagement. So once again, on Facebook, new stories are catching headlines, and different things in your posts can come up in a search engine, whereas on Instagram, all you really have to play with are those captions, so a huge way to get... Um, your message out there and kind of highlight some key points is through hashtags, which we will talk about in a little bit. Okay, so these, um, I don't want to overwhelm you. There's a lot of information, but these are the six different tactics that I want to talk about today. And we'll just go over them briefly and then do a deep dive, a slide on each one of them. So post. This is kind of your original piece of content that you are putting out on social media, kind of the sole purpose to interact with one another. Um, that can be stories, live streams, photos, videos, you know the drill. And then hashtags, like I just mentioned. This is a word or phrase um, preceded by that hash symbol that really summarizes your content or um, it just kind of sums it up in a word or, or two after you've made a caption or in the middle of your post. If you could only take away three main words or three main points from it, you would kind of put that in a hashtag. Um, tagging, I would like to argue, especially with your volunteer efforts, this might be the most important thing um, because it's going to get your followers and the end user engaged with Carolina Donor Services the people that you're working with and the people that you're with. Stories are a type of post, except they expire after 24 hours. Um, followers is how you interact with one another. Um, and then metrics, lastly, is how you measure your success on social media <laughs> and make sure that your efforts um, are worthwhile and you want to keep up with um, doing the same thing that you've been doing or change it up. Okay, so for posts, I mentioned with Facebook, you really want to know your audience. Um, so friends and family on Facebook, a little bit more detail-oriented. On Instagram, you might have a following of people that you don't know very well. Um, or you could bring them in from Carolina Donor Services or other like-minded organizations. Um, so fix your messaging and tailor it to those different platforms. And then first impressions are everything. So what I like to say is less is more, less filters, less text. Give people a little teaser and leave them wanting more. You don't want to just put all your information out there and not have them follow up. Just maybe put a two to three sentence caption max and then say, hey, here's a, a link in my bio or follow this link and give them that next step or go follow Carolina Donor Services just to um, keep them on that journey. And then lastly, uh, be yourself. On social media, you are all going to offer something a little bit different and you all have such different personalities and amazing things to offer. So um, it's such a great way to build and nourish relationships, but it's going to come through if you're not being your authentic self and you're going to have such more amazing content to offer if you do that. So stories, like I mentioned, are a type of post that expire after 24 hours. Have any of you posted a story? You have. Great. Okay. 
So if you have not, in your timeline on social media, it runs up and down. But if you are posting an Instagram story, this 24 hour um, post, it's gonna run left to right on the top of Facebook and Instagram. And this is gonna be so, so vital in your volunteer efforts because one, it's gonna organize your feed. You don't have to be posting every single day and just clutter everything up or lose important content. Um, but even like today, following this presentation or after lunch, um, there's a bunch of cool like photo, like a setup outside to take photos. If that's something you don't wanna live on forever, you could just take a quick video or a picture and say, hey, I'm here today, and that will go up in your 24 hour feed. And I'm more than happy to stay after and show you the difference um, and get you a post out there because there's some really cool stuff out there. Um, but a cool thing about these stories is there's so many different um, like features that are offered. So polls, you can put your location, you can add a link, a donation. Um, and if so, you've posted a story, you know how you can do the poll, yes or no. So I could ask someone, hey, have you donated blood before? Yes or no. And then you can physically or manually go and look and see who said yes, who said no. Um, after this presentation, you're going to want to build your own strategy, but just one idea is, okay, those people that said yes, don't be evasive, um, but you could always message them and say, hey, I've seen your reply to my, um, my poll on my story. You've donated before. We have this event coming up with Carolina Donor Services if you're interested. Don't want you guys to be evasive or say, hey, I noticed that you said no. Um, we want you to come out. But you know, you could craft that message in an inviting, nice way. Um, and if they replied to the story, then they might be open to that type of interaction or communication. OK, so hashtags, great way to organize content as well. A good rule of thumb on Facebook or Instagram um, from my practices have been two to three, just because it can be a bit overwhelming if you're overflowing people. Um, with a lot of those, but all that you do is type that hash symbol and then you start typing a word and it's going to hyperlink it and it can take you to an entirely new feed. So these were some common hashtags um, that I made a list of that I found through Carolina Donor Services page and then other similar orgs and I know that there's plenty, plenty more, but if you want to pick up people on your post that are following um, these type of feeds, these might be ones that you're interested in. And a good way to get the word out there and overcome that two to three rule of thumb is to break up your text and maybe do a space after your main original piece of content. And then you could list a bunch of those at the end. But that way, it's not in the bulk of your message, if that makes sense. OK, so followers looks a little bit different on Instagram and Facebook. And technically, you can follow people on Facebook, but it's more common to be on a friends list. And if you're on Instagram and you're following someone, that doesn't mean that they're following you and seeing all your updates, um, and vice versa. But on Facebook friends list, if you guys are friends, then you are mutually seeing each other's posts and each other's content. Um, but it's kind of easy to get lost on Instagram. You can just go to somebody's page and there's all these like fun blue buttons that say follow and you can just go down and click all of them. But I think you need to be mindful that these people might not interact with your content the way that you want them. So maybe do a little research and go on Carolina Donor Services page, see, see who's commenting on their post, see who's also following them and interacting with them and that might be someone good to give a follow and start nourishing that relationship with. Okay, and then tagging I mentioned earlier, I think this is just so, so important for you all um, to do. With Carolina Donor Services, the people you're with, um, just to get the name out there and get people onto that next wavelength. Um, I mentioned in my opening statement, we're always 
constantly distracted and fed a wealth of information. And people nowadays have such a short attention span, at least I do. I'll be on social media and I'll be doing something and I'll think about something else and I'll go back and say, what was I gonna do next on here? I meant to search this person or go follow yada, 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 but I will blank out. And a lot of people do the same. So this is a way to give people that next step to get them moving in the right direction. So whereas the hashtag, you make that hash symbol and start typing a phrase, to tag somebody, all you do is type that at symbol and start typing someone's name or a business or organization. So you can type at Carolina Donor Services, it's gonna come up on your Facebook or Instagram and it'll turn into a hyperlink so those people can click directly on the name and go straight to their page, give them a follow, interact, instead of having to go back and search it for themselves and ultimately probably forget what they were doing in the first place. <laughs> but you can do this um, in a Facebook comment, po or, yeah, Facebook comment, Facebook post, Instagram comment, or Instagram post. And it's a lot easier than you think um, when you're on Instagram besides typing that at symbol, there's also a way when you're going to type your original caption, it'll say tag people. It's right there, you can't miss it if you're gonna post. Um, but I'd love to stick around after and help anybody that's a little bit confused because I think this is gonna be so, so vital in forwarding all your um, relationships over to the right accounts. Okay, so lastly are metrics. And this is just making sure that you're getting a return on the work that you're putting in um, on social media as volunteers and making sure that all these posts are worthwhile. So I challenge you all, if you have any availability this week, to just make a note on a sticky or mentally or in your phone and look at about how many likes are you getting, how many comments, um, things of that nature and then go back and do a benchmark in three weeks, a month, three months, whenever um, you feel like there's maybe some important events that might get some engagement with Carolina Donor Services and see, okay, were these tactics working? Should I change it up? Should I try something new? Am I posting too little? Am I posting less? But I, I have a feeling after this presentation and talking afterwards that you guys are going to start to see increased engagement and visibility. And hopefully we'll make a benchmark um, with the social team at Carolina Donor Services and in a few months with all your efforts, they will have more engagement, more followers as well. Okay, so February 14th, what better way to show love than National Donor Day. This is an example of a Facebook post that you all can reference if you just need a little inspiration and obviously put your own spin on it when you get there. Um, but this says, I'm teaming up with at Carolina Do Donor Services to celebrate hashtag National Donor Day. Want to join me? Check out this link to learn more and get involved. So I stole this photo from their Instagram, which I do not recommend. <laughs> <laughs> But it, um, it does have some informational content on there, which is fun and a little bit captivating. But some things to note are that it has the tag. So I hit that at symbol and it obviously vanished, but it created the hyperlink for their Facebook account so people can go directly there. It has an image to stop people from scrolling on Facebook and catch their eye and say, wait, what's this? It has the hashtag National Donor Day, which leading up to um, February 14th and during and after, this hashtag is gonna be so prevalent. There's gonna be so many posts going out and you wanna get in that feed um, because people that are looking um, for donors or um, need blood or tissue or something, they're gonna be following that as well. So use that hashtag, get in there. And then lastly is a call to action, which is this link at the end. Because we could have stopped the post saying, I'm teaming up with Carolina Donor Services or I'm a volunteer for them um, and I'm working with them on National Donor Day. But to give them that next step and that call to action, we gave them um, the followers a link saying, check this out, just pushing them on to the next thing, whether they go to their page or go to the link. So always, always have a call to action on your post. 
And then for Instagram, in April, um, it is National Donate Life Month. So this post um, says, in honor of hashtag National Donate Life Month, join me in giving the gift of a longer, healthier life. Click the link in my bio to learn more about hashtag organ donation and how you can get involved. And then there's a little hashtag under that, but you can see it. And it says hashtag donate life because I found out that that was a very widely used hashtag in this field. Um, but once again, there's the tag on the photo. So when you're going through the post, I mentioned this earlier, it says tag people. And so instead of tagging them in my comment, I tagged Carolina Donor Services on the actual picture. And that will once again redirect them. Um, to their page so they can follow. Um, there's those two hashtags in there. You could throw in one more if you wanted to. And then um, the call to action. Click the link in my bio. So I want you guys to take a note of this. On Instagram, if you um, type in http www link, there is no hyperlink there. So once again, Short attention spans, are people really gonna you know, go into Google from that? Um, they're not gonna be redirected directly to a site through an Instagram comment um, with a link. So I said click the link in my bio and where you have your cute, fun little photo, something about yourself on your page, you can edit um, a link, super duper easy. And so if people click on your name, they'll see it right there and they can go directly to it. Um, but once again, I can help with this afterwards. Okay, so lastly, I wanna wrap it up with a little challenge. Um, and I challenge you guys by the end of today, if you can, to create a post on your Facebook, on your Instagram. I would love it if you tagged me in Carolina Donor Services, but the only way that I will see this is if you use those two hashtags, Friends for Life Ambassadors and hashtag advocacy symposium. Um, but be yourself and have fun with it. There's so much fun stuff outside, like I mentioned. So you might as well just knock this out of the way now and pick up one of those fun little photo props and take a picture. You can make a story, a post. Um, but I want you to feel empowered to help out. And remember, you guys are volunteers, but you're also brand ambassadors and you're marketers. So. Now is a really exciting time to be a volunteer, and it's a really exciting time to be on social media. So um, let me know if you have any questions.